Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope that you're having a good day so far. Um, so today I just want to do one of my short episodes. I promise this is going to be, I well, okay, maybe I shouldn't promise. I hope this is going to be a, a pretty quick episode to get through. I just have one thing to talk about. Um, as we all know, Biden and his administration and a lot of your, your Democrats, your more radical Democrats, have decided that white supremacy is the biggest threat to American democracy in 2021. Now, sometimes it's hard to keep up with these things because then Biden also claimed that climate change and the destruction of our planet was the biggest threat to American democracy in 2021. So I think it's pretty much whatever that they are trying to fight against at that particular moment or trying to create a narrative of in that particular moment is their biggest threat. Kind of like how Trump supporters were the biggest threat in the 2020 presidential election. It is what it is. They like to make things up. However, the Department of Homeland Security, not only back in 2020 did they release a... um, a bulletin about domestic terrorism threats. They've also released some new documents and we're going to cover these and look at these. Now I have several articles that are from the left and the right. I want to read them both and I just want to kind of see what they both have in common and kind of compare and contrast from there about how the left writes about this and how the right writes about this. So first we're going to start out out with Newsmax. We know that that is a right-leaning um, political media outlet, and they're a newer outlet. They've kind of taken the place of Fox News for a lot of Republicans and conservatives because Fox News is still owned by Democrats, and they kind of fall under the legacy media, and they pick and choose. There are a few um, journalists on Fox that are still decent, like Tucker Carlson, um, I think Gutfeld is pretty good. Judge Janine, um, what's her name? Judge Janine. I can't think of her last name, but you know who I'm talking about. So let's read this article. It says DHS draft report, white supremacist, more deadly threat than foreign groups. This was written by Kathy Burke. Now this was written in 2020. But there is a reason that I brought this up because it ties into the new documents that have been released. So Politico reported that um, it was an early draft report from the DHS. And then the two later draft versions of the same document described the threat from white supremacists in slightly different language. But all three portray it as a higher deadly threat than that, than that of foreign terrorist groups, according to Politico. So, quote, foreign terrorist organizations will continue to call for homeland attacks, but probably will remain constrained in their ability to direct such plots over the next year. All three declare, according to Politico, Russia probably will be the primary covert foreign influence actor and purveyor of disinformation and misinformation in the homeland, the documents also say. Ben Witz, the editor-in-chief of the national security site Lawfare, first obtained the documents and shared them with the news site it reported. A DHS spokesperson declined to comment on allegedly leaked documents on, and on when the document will be made public. None of the drafts reviewed referred to a threat from Antifa, the militant left-leaning agitators who senior Trump administration officials have described as domestic terrorists. Two of the drafts referred to extremists trying to exploit social grievances, driving lawful protests. Well, to me, the only people I've seen out protesting that ends up turning into rioting are the left exploiting social grievances, causing people to go wild in the streets. I haven't seen any conservatives do that. And other than uh, January 6th at the Capitol, I'm not so sure all of those were conservatives. And like we discussed last week, I'm not so sure some of them were not FBI undercover agents or FBI informants. We need more information. Um, Witz told Politico the later drafts show a change in language about the prominence of white supremacist terrorism. 
It diminishes the prominence of white supremacy relative to other domestic violent extremism and, without being inaccurate, puts it in a basket along with other violent activity that may be more palatable for the administration to acknowledge. All three documents note that 2019 was the most deadly year for domestic violent extremists since the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995. Among DVE, or Domestic Violent Extremist Actors, WSEs, or White Supremacist Extremists, conducted half of all lethal attacks, 8 of 16, resulting in the majority of deaths, 39 of 48, the drafts read. I haven't seen these reports, so I don't know if this is true or not. That's the problem. Um, CNN, so they wrote this article the next month about how white supremacists remain the deadliest U.S. terror threat. And this was written by Geneva Sands. It says, um, white supremacist extremists will remain the deadliest domestic terror threat to the United States, according to DHS first annual Homeland Threat Assessment, which details a range of threats from election interference to unprecedented storms. Since 2018, white supremacists have conducted more lethal attacks in the U.S. than any other domestic extremist movement, demonstrating a long-standing intent to target racial and religious minorities, members of the LGBTQ plus community, politicians, and those they believe promote multiculturalism and globalization, according to the report. As secretary, I'm concerned about any form of violent extremism, wrote acting Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf. However, I am particularly concerned about white supremacists, violent extremists who have been exceptionally lethal in their abhorrent targeted attacks in recent years. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know about any of these attacks. Now, I know that there was the rally in Charlottesville that they claimed these people were white supremacists. And I'll have to dig up the video. However, supposedly these people were actually leftist actors that came in acting like white supremacists to stir up discontent. They were actors. They were not really white supremacists. They were pretending. That's the story. It's alleged. I don't know if it's true, but that is a, a story that is going around or was at the time. Um, so that's all of that. And then I have this the other Department one. Of Homeland Security is oh, no, stop. White no video. Not the video. So this was from The Hill in September of 20. So you have all of these places talking about how white supremacists are the most persistent and lethal threat to the U.S. And even Fox covered it as well. And they wrote about this in October. But what I want to look at um, they were talking about this back in, uh, 2009, um, Homeland Security Report warns of rising right-wing extremism. So, if you didn't know that this was something that was being discussed back then, and they were using the Tea Party movement, they were saying that the Tea Party movement were the white supremacists. So it says, if you think the conservative Tea Party movement is daunting, take a look at a new report issued by the Department of Homeland Security that says right-wing extremism is on the rise throughout the country. In the report, officials warn that right-wing extremists could use the bad state of the U.S. economy and the election of the country's first black president to recruit new members to their cause. First, I just want to say, that overwhelmingly white people voted for Obama. Yeah, that sure sounds like white supremacists to me. Um, in the intelligence assessment issued to law enforcement last week, Homeland Security officials said there was no specific information about an attack from right-wing extremists in the works. The agency warns that an extended economic downturn with real estate foreclosures, unemployment, and an inability to obtain credit could foster an environment for extremists to recruit new members who may not, not have been supportive of these causes in the past. In November, law enforcement officials were seeing more threats and unusual interest against then-president-elect Barack Obama than ever before. Thank Progress notes some key takeaways from the report. So, anti-immigration. Right-wing extremist groups' frustration over perceived lack of government action on, le on illegal immigration has the potential to incite individuals or small groups toward violence. If such violence were to occur, it likely would be isolated, small-scale, and directed at specific immigration-related targets. Um, we've been dealing with an immigration problem for decades, and I've never seen conservatives, true conservatives, get 
violent and attack illegal immigrants. I've never seen that happen. Just to point that out. Recruiting returning vets. Right-wing extremists will attempt to recruit and radicalize returning veterans in order to exploit their skills and knowledge derived from military training and combat. Gun-related violence. Heightened interest in legislation for tighter firearms may be invigorating right-wing extremist activities, specifically the white supremacist and militia movements. Um, really, what that was doing is it was frustrating law-abiding as citizens at the thought of the government trying to take away their Second Amendment rights. There was no extreme violent actions taken. People were just voicing their frustration that the government thinks that they have the right to take away our constitutional rights. That's all it is. Um, the report is getting a lot of pushback from angry conservative bloggers like Michelle Malkin. By contrast, the piece of crap report issued on April 7th is a sweeping indictment of conservatives, and the intent is clear. As the two spokespeople I talked with on the phone today made clear, they both pinpointed the recent economic downturn and the general state of the economy for stoking right-wing extremism. One of the spokespeople said he was told that the report has been in the works for a year. My BS detector went off the chart, and yours will too. If you read through the entire report, which asserts with no evidence that an unquantified resurgence in right-wing extremist recruitment and radicalization activity is due to home foreclosures, job losses, and the historical presidential election. Mo Lane from RedState.com asks, are you a white right-wing extremist too? Why, well, it's a document that discusses the potential threats that we can expect from right-wing extremists, no hyphen for some reason, in the coming months. There's the unusual stuff about guns, illegal immigration, and disgruntled war veterans, plus the new wrinkle of our having elected an African-American president. The report concludes, unsurprisingly, that we have to worry more about lone wolves and small terrorist cells than anything else. Well, how do I read the full report? There is no full report. Okay. So, right here, this is what's going on today. So, this is from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Um, domestic violent extremism poses heightened threat in 2021. So, this was released on March 1st of 2021. Now, ask yourself, why are you just now seeing this? Well, because, you know, nobody covers this. Steven Crowder did. So, there's all these things. Um... The IC assesses that domestic violent extremists, which I will call DVEs, are more motivated by a range of ideologies and galvanized by recent political and societal events in the U.S. pose an elevated threat to the homeland in 2021. Um, enduring DVE motivations pertaining to biases against minority populations and perceived government overreach will almost certainly continue to drive DVE radical radicalization and mobilization to violence. Can we just point out who has been the most violent over the past year? Left-wing extremists, BLM Marxist terrorist group, and an Antifa domestic terrorist group. I don't know why they can't just be honest. The ICS says that lone offenders or small cells of DVEs adhering to diverse set of violent extremist ideologies are more likely to carry out violent attacks in the homeland than organizations that allegedly advocate a DVE ideology. I think not, because Antifa um, advocates for a DBE ideology, and so does BLM, and they're the ones burning down the cities. The IC assesses that racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, RMVEs, and militia violent extremists, MVEs, present the most lethal DVE threats, with MRVEs most likely to conduct mass casualty attacks against civilians, and MVEs typically targeting law enforcement and government personnel and facilities. Okay, so, who do you have killing the cops? BLM and Antifa. And also, who um, has been conducting mass casualty attacks? Well, they tried to say a white guy committed one, and it ended up being an Indian man. Then they didn't want to release any information about the shooter in Austin who hurt 13 people because it was a black man. So, actually, that's not true. And while typically in the past, mass shootings have typically been done by white men, that's not what's happening right now. And also, who is 
doing racially and ethnically motivated violent crimes black people against Asians you see it on video there is proof of it so all of this is just a bunch of it's just a bunch of bull the ICSS is that U.S. RMVEs who promote the superior, superiority of the white race are the DBE actors with the most persistent and concerning transitional connections because individuals with similar, similar ideological beliefs exist outside of the U.S. and these MRVEs frequently communicate with and seek to influence each other. The only people that I see that have a heightened sense of skin color are BLM and Antifa, and your white pandering liberals. Those are the people that are really worried about skin color. Your conservative people, they don't care. They don't care about your skin color. They just care about the good of the country. And that is true. The ICSS is that DBEs exploit a variety of popular social media platforms, smaller websites with targeted audiences, and encrypted chat applications to recruit new adherents, plan and rally support for interperson actions, and disseminate materials that contribute to radicalization and mobilization to violence. If you read these, as you read these, if you know what's really been going on, you will know that everything that they're projecting on right-wing extremists or conservatives, Trump supporters, they have done themselves. So let's recap that statement. They exploit a variety of popular social media platforms. So they just had um, the, I think it was the Conservative Western Summit or the Christian Western Summit. I don't know. It was in Denver, Colorado. Mike Pence was there. A lot of conservative Christians were there that are in political office and things like that. And there was a call to invite people to treat these people that were at this summit violently on Facebook. I saw it with my own eyes. Um, I'll see if I can find it by the end of the video. It was an invitation to violence against these people attending the summit, and Facebook never once took it down. Um, they also encrypt, do encrypted chat applications. So people that were working uh, part of Antifa, they were doing an encrypted chat that somehow got leaked out. And you got to hear what they were talking about. So that's Antifa. That's not right-wing conservative people. And um, they disseminate materials that contribute. BLM does that all the time. Disseminates materials to contribute to radicalization and mobilization. Even our left-wing government does that. Um, the IC assesses that several factors could increase the likelihood or lethality of DBE attacks in 2021 and beyond, including escalating support from persons in the U.S. or abroad, growing perceptions of government overreach related to legal or policy changes and disruptions, and high-profile attacks spurring follow-on attacks and innovations in targeting and attack tactics. DBE loan offenders will continue to pose significant detection and disruption challenges because of their capacity for independent radicalization to violence, ability to mobilize discreetly, and access to firearms. Yeah, that's your criminals. Law-abiding conservative citizens and law-abiding citizens in general, they're not disseminating firearms discreetly to people. That's your criminals doing that. Remember they did that in the Chaz Zone or the Chop Zone, whatever you want to call it, the Summer of Love. They were giving guns out to minors. They're a little president guy. You know, the black man who was the leader of that zone was giving out illegal firearms to minors. Let's just remember that. So, as part of the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, mission, led to, mission to lead and support intelligence community integration and deliver insights, the ODNI has leveraged IC components to provide a comprehensive intelligence assessment on domestic violent extremists. Okay, so I don't care for the rest of this. Um, it talks about uh, racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, anti-government, anti-authority violent extremists, um, all other domestic terrorism threats, um, ideological agendas that are not otherwise defined under one of the other domestic terrorism threat categories. You have animal rights, environmental uh, violent extremists. Yeah, that would be your climate change supporters and your vegans maybe allegedly um abortion related violent extremists um yeah they're not violent people they don't do that um sovereign citizen violent extremists 
conservative Republicans do not believe that they are sovereign citizens. They don't pull that crap. Go to YouTube and just check out some videos of people that claim that they are sovereign citizens. It's hilarious. Um, Anna Christ and oh, I'm such an idiot. Anarchist violent extremists. Conservatives are not anarchists. They just believe in smaller government. So um, they're they're going a little overboard here. Really? That's it? That's the whole document? There's no more? Four pages to assess violent extremists. Um, domestic violent extremists are U.S.-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of the criminal laws of the United States or any state, appearing to be intended to intimidate or coerce coerce a civilian population and influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion or affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping as per the definition of domestic terrorism. They are just reading out what BLM and Antifa did all summer and are continuing to do now. Do they not get the irony that they are saying that this is what the right-wing extremists are doing Yet this is exactly what BLM and Antifa are still doing to this day, especially in Portland. And they just moved it into Denver. Are, are they really that idiotic? Mere advocacy of political or social positions, political activism, use of strong rhetoric, or generalized philosophic embrace of violent tactics may not constitute violent extre extremism and may be constitutionally protected. Yes, your opinion is constitutionally protected. While the majority of DBEs fall into one threat category, some draw upon or are inspired by ideological themes found in other threat categories. Look, the thing is, <clears throat> they're just, they're mistreating um, they're, they're redefining what's going on. They're projecting everything that they're doing onto the right wing. And we know exactly who is doing all the violence. We know who is, you know, exploiting social grievances. That is your radical left Democrats. That's BLM. That's Antifa. They're lying when they tell you that white supremacy is the biggest threat to um, America right now. It is a lie. Okay. Um. But I think I just came across this uh, article right here from Sputnik International. Never heard of that before. But I do intend to save this because I'm going to talk about this on Thursday, I think, about the different way that the media and the government treated the BLM and Tifa rioters and the... Uh, protesters at the Capitol on January 6th. I think it's very important to look at the differences because right now white people are being attacked. We're being called racist, bigots, violent extremists. We're white supremacists. Anybody who supports Trump or is a conservative is now considered a white supremacist. This is an attack on us. And so we need to look at the differences of why they are doing it, what we can do to fight back, because we cannot allow them to continue that narrative and make us look like terrible people because we're not. We're not white supremacists. That is not to say that there aren't white supremacists lurking somewhere in the shadows of America. Of course there are. Just like there's black supremacists and Hispanic supremacists, there are people of every race that believe that they are better because of their race. However, it's not an epidemic. It's not as crazy as the left is trying to say, except on their end, where they're the ones with all of the violent extremists that are burning down cities and trying to coerce political changes through violence, intimidation, and destruction. You can be sure that whatever the left accuses the right of doing, they are in fact doing that themselves at that moment. That's why they project it. Pay attention, people. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than what we even know. And this is where doing your own research, looking at things, questioning everything, and trusting no one about what comes out of their mouth until you can verify it. That's why we have to start being that way. The government 
they have lost all trust of the American people. Mo if you could question all Americans, aside from your liberal hacks and your woke mob, everybody would say they distrust the American government at this point. They would. That's what's happening. We need to wake up. We need to pay attention. Do you know what else you need to do? You need to go join my Facebook, Lauren Collins. I just got to say something. You can also email me, got to say something 21 at gmail.com. You can find me on Pandora, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Anchor. There's so many platforms. I don't even remember all the names. Um, also, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you like. I will always answer back. And you can join my Reddit, just got to say something. Please join my Reddit community. I'm trying to build that up so I can communicate with my fans and my supporters. That would be great. And I do appreciate all of my supporters. It means so much to me that y'all are supporting me. And I, I really enjoy what I do. It's become a huge passion of mine. I never thought that this would be one of my passions. And once I started getting into it and digging in and, and learning new things, I just realized this this is my lane. This is where I belong. This is what I need to do. And I'm going to continue doing it. Also, I would really appreciate if you would go and subscribe to the Scott Ford Show. Isaac Hayes at the Cajun Conservative and his Christian podcast, Brothers Just Searching. My friend Christy at the Lenar Score on Facebook and Christy's Closet on YouTube. Closet with a K. And TV's Rob is Unwoke. Great people. I think you'll enjoy them. Have a good rest of your day. See you back here on Wednesday. And uh, go watch my other videos. Like and subscribe. Have a good day. God bless.